Hello, we're the Rodriguez family, and welcome to Trinity Sunday Worship. We're so excited that you've decided to come to St. Luke's for worship today, and we're so happy and excited to worship with you as well. On with the service. May a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah my weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah comes to fight for me. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. Come from the ashes, what will arise. Death is defeated, the king is alive. A reason hallelujah with everything inside of me. I raise a hallelujah I will across the darkness we I raise a hallelujah In the middle of the mystery I raise a hallelujah I fear you lost your hold on me I'm gonna sing In the middle of the storm gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will arise Death is defeated The King is alive Sing a little louder 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 In the presence of my enemies, sing a little louder, louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder, my weapon is a melody. Sing a little louder, heaven comes to fight for me. Sing a little louder, in the presence of my enemies, sing a little louder, louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder. My weapon is a melody, sing a little louder. Heaven comes to fight for me. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and loud, you're gonna hear my praises roar. From the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeat, the king. Is a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. As we gather on this day, celebrating the wonder of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we praise God for the majesty of all things, but particularly the world God created. Help us, triune God, to see your hand in all things and to glorify you. And all God's children said loudly, Amen.
Today's lesson is from 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 11 through 13. Paul writes, Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order, listen to my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. This is the word of the Lord. Today's gospel lesson is from Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Hi, welcome to today's children's message. In the reading we just heard, we heard that Jesus calls his disciples to a mountain. The disciples are people that follow Jesus. And it says 11 disciples. So this is like Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Peter, other disciples that you may have heard their names before. And he asks them to come to this mountain. And this is after he has risen from the dead. And he worships with them. And he talks to them. And he says, some doubt it. Have you ever asked questions before? Has someone told you something and you've wondered, ha, ah, is that true? Or do I have to do that? Or are you sure they said that? I know I've asked those questions. And even in that, Jesus still says, all of you, go make more disciples. So he's asking the disciples to share the love that Jesus brought into the world. Jesus' light into the world. He's asking the disciples to do that for others and asking others to do that then for other people. Imagine this. You're outside. Maybe you're riding your bike. Maybe you're going for a walk. Maybe you're writing with chalk outside and you see somebody and just being able to say hello or offer a smile, or put that heart in chalk on your driveway, you're sharing the love. If we all did that, think about how much love we could share and how many people could hear about Jesus in this way. So help us together to go make disciples, to be kind, and to share love. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Many times during the past three months, we have heard it said, the church is not a building, the church is a people. How true it is, we are the church. The church is only as good as its followers its disciples. Still, many of you are missing your church building. Church buildings give us a great deal of comfort. But the church is really all about a people and a mission that are larger than ourselves. And this mission is to make disciples of all peoples. It is what we call the Great Commission in our Gospel for today. We are commanded by Jesus to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And as we do, the fullness of God is promised to be with us always. I understand this making disciples to be far more than missionary work to others outside the faith. It is also about growing as disciples or followers of the Lord. And I believe that these past months have been a good time for discipleship. 
Now is a good time for the people making up Christ Church to grow both inside as disciples as well as outside in witness to others. For sure, the past three months have been extremely hard for all of us. We have been challenged by the coronavirus from which many have suffered and many have died. We have lost much of our support system, partially from having to withdraw from going to church. Now these past two weeks, we have been confronted with the awful way in which people often treat other people. We certainly are pained by the death of George Floyd in South Minneapolis. The loss of a person's lives at the hands of those who arrested him is wrong and is part of a pattern. We have also sorrowed at the unchristian ways some people have treated other people in the aftermath and have mistreated other people's property. Although we need to change the power structure, we truly must find more peaceful ways to bring it about. With such challenges in our Christian lives, we wonder how growth inside discipleship could occur. Surprisingly, when human beings are challenged, it is a good time for growth in discipleship. Just think of all of the teaching and learning of life lessons that have gone on the last few months with children. I listened to the Wisconsin Life segment on Wisconsin Public Radio on Wednesday, and I heard three third graders and their teacher at the Madison Country Day School nearby be interviewed on Zoom about the closing months of their education experience. These three, identified as Gia, Briah, and Adia, along with teacher Galen Weezy, spoke to Maureen McCollum of how they had learned from having to figure out their own way online to classes at school often with both parents meeting on their computers. One of them had to take care of a three-year-old sister. Another came to understand their parents. She said, whenever I came home from school, I often bugged my parents. Now when I see what they are doing at home, I know why they are cranky. <laughs> Adia concluded, I think in the beginning I was freaking out, but then I learned to calm down. I thought the world has gone through so much before with viruses and wars, and we'll get through this one too. Mr. Weezy said, they are learning a ton of stuff, learning how to be self-reliant. Those skills alone are invaluable. Certainly, a lot of personal growth has come about through going through the COVID-19 period together. In a similar fashion, we have dealt with many different things that have matured us as disciples or have the potential to do so. In the aftermath of the death of George Floyd and all that has followed, <clears throat> religious voices have called to mind the basic teachings of Jesus to love our neighbor as ourselves. Reverend Marion Edgar Buddy, the Bishop of the Washington DC Diocese, clearly spoke of this on Monday when she said, Jesus was very clear that God is interested in how we treat other human beings with love and care. God shares our grief and hope. We seek justice and faithfulness to our Savior who lived a life of nonviolence and sacrificial love. And when I heard this from an Episcopalian bishop, I thought, she is reminding us of our theology, the Lutheran theology of the cross. It has been a very good time for growing as our disciples in our understanding of our Lutheran theology. Martin Luther first coined the phrase theology of the cross in his thesis 20 in his Heidelberg Theses given in April 25th, 1518. He wrote, that person deserves to be called a theologian who comprehends what is visible of God through suffering and the cross. The theologian of the cross sees God only in the suffering of Christ on the cross. 
For me, the harsh reality of this last discipleship lesson is that when I look at the events of the last few weeks, I see it through the cross of Jesus. <clears throat> Jesus died for the kind of sin exhibited in racism and white privilege. He died for my sin, the ways in which I have been part of a race, racist people, even without knowing it, or have gained through being part of the overclass. In other words, on this Trinity Sunday, we know God best through Jesus on the cross. His words, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me, shows that God suffers with us in Jesus. God also forgives us through that cross. And there is as great a mystery behind how God does this as there is in understanding God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yet we know in and with it all, there is growth in discipleship. We know this because we know that as Ronald Rollheiser once wrote, the church is always God hung between two thieves. As growing followers of Christ, we know there is a cost to following him. Dietrich Bonhoeffer writes in The Cost of Discipleship, if we refuse to take up our cross and submit to suffering and rejection at the hands of others, we forfeit our fellowship with Christ and have ceased to follow him. But if we lose our lives in his service and carry our cross, we shall find our lives again in the fellowship of the cross with Christ. And as I thought about identifying with myself with those who gain by white privilege, which is where I belong, I remembered those words of Bonhoeffer that we are to lose our lives in his service and carry our cross. That is my cross to bear and maybe yours. The church grows as we grow in discipleship. Pastor Michael Foss writes, all the power the church will ever need comes from people, people have have, who have learned to live in Christ by living lives of disciplined discipleship. The resurrected Jesus told his followers to go and make disciples of nations, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. What were they to teach? In a word, love. I give you a new commandment, Jesus said, that you love one another. Everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. We are all disciples, servants, no matter what our role may be. The church truly is where we love one another. Today, we are also commissioned to make disciples of others. When we have become disciples, we will want to share it with others. <clears throat> right now, we cannot go very far from home to carry out our mission into the world. But surely in all of our contacts online and through our calls, we can witness to our faith. We can live out our Lutheran theology, which is not surprised by our lives being difficult. After all, Jesus' disciples are those who suffer with those who are suffering. We are to take a stand with those who are suffering and do what we can to change the power structures in the world. Maybe the Great Commission for us right now must be simply living out the Great Commandment. After all, it is true that what you, have, what you do has far greater impact than what you say. Your actions speak louder than your words. Life is not easy on this Holy Trinity Sunday, June 7, 2020, in our country, in our world. We might secretly want to escape to join those astronauts going to the space station last weekend. But right now is a good time for our discipleship. Jesus says to you and says to me, if you are truly my disciples, you will take up my cross and follow, you, follow me. If we follow Jesus' suffering on the cross, 
we will do all we can to demonstrate our love to all people. We pray the prayer from a time that was dealing with these questions before, from a song that was sung at the Luther Lee Convention in New York in 1970. Help me, Jesus, to love my neighbor as myself. I don't care about the color of your skin, what religion you've been in, but help me, Jesus, to love my neighbor as myself. Amen. of Trinity before all words begun the interweaving of the three the Father, Spirit, Son the universe of space and time did not arise by chance but as the three in love and hope where room within their dance face of Trinity, newborn in Bethlehem, then blooded by a crown of thorns outside Jerusalem. The dance of Trinity is meant for human flesh and bone. When fear confines the dance in death, God rolls away the stone. Aloud of Trinity as wind and tongues of flame Set people free at Pentecost to tell the Savior's name We know the yoke of sin and death, our necks have worn its soul Go tell the world of weight and woe that we are free Good morning, everyone. I'm Julie Hogue. I'm the blood drive coordinator for the Red Cross at St. Luke's. It's sort of become a cliche to say that things have changed a little bit since March. I don't even like saying that anymore. However, one thing that hasn't changed is the need for blood in our community. And to that end, we will be holding the Good to See You Blood Drive at St. Luke's on June 18 from noon until 6 p.m. I call it the Good to See You Blood Drive because I think this is going to be one of the first bigger public events we've had at church since the last blood drive in March. This again will be on June 18 from noon until 6. There is a sign up link on our church website and you can always give me a call if you're having any trouble signing up. My number is 608-445-6596. Safety, of course, is a number one precaution for people at Red Cross, and that's certainly no different at blood drives. So every donor, everyone who comes into the building will be getting their temperature taken when they walk in. Everyone will be required to wear a mask, and we're still going to have that good time that we always have, even if we still have to keep a little socially distant. To that end, appointments for this drive also are required. So again, if you have any trouble getting in to make an appointment, please look at the link or give me a call, 608-445-6596.
I'm so looking forward to seeing people again, and I can't tell you, it's going to be so good to see you at the Blood Drive at St. Luke's on June 18. Thanks for your consideration. Have a wonderful day. Let us bring our hearts to prayer. Called into unity with one another in the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. God of community, you form us as your church. Guide our bishops, pastors, deacons, and all the baptized in sharing your life-giving good news with all the world. Strengthen us to be bold in our proclamation. God of creation, you called everything into being. Sustain this world with your renewing care. Inspire us to see waterways, plant life, birds, fish, insects, and mammals, and call them all good. God of counsel, all authority belongs to you. Encourage the leaders of this and every land to seek peace, equity, and unity. Instill wisdom in advocates who work toward justice in often ignored communities. God of care, you created us in your image. Help us to see your likeness in all people. Open our eyes to see and attend to all who face oppression and suffering. Console, heal, and nourish all in this time of our special need. God of companionship, you accompany this body of faith. As we continue living with chosen separation from one another, keep us strong in community with one another. Watch over all who are suffering in any way, whether in body, mind, or spirit. And we also ask you to bless those and these from our midst, Aaron, Brianna, and Theron Moon Mayhem, Caleb and Sarah Brodsmar Moore, Merle Paula Moore, Jim, Lila, and Kara Moravik, Luke Morgan, Sharon Morgan, and Paul and Judy Moriarty. Bless and keep them all. God of comfort, address the needs of our community and our nation at this time. Help us to be instruments of your peace, protect the vulnerable, give strength and wisdom to those charged to protect both human life and property. God of compassion, console us in our grief with the promise of the resurrection. We give you thanks for the saints of all time and in our lives. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now go with these words. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. May God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you into eternal life. Amen.